Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing stock market wrap for Thursday, February 21st, 2019. Uh, a little bit uh, for everybody today, a little bit for the bulls, a little bit for the bears. Uh, let's take a look what happened. Uh, this is the, we'll start out here with the uh, S&P 500 uh, futures, a uh, 60-minute chart of ES. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit, but uh, again, this is the trend line that I've been focused on recently. This trend line comes off the lows on the 27th of December, the first reaction low. Quite a few reactions, again, it's been covered in recent videos. So, uh, uh, you know what, let's jump over to NQ first, because I mentioned this. NQ broke down yesterday, but it was very unimpulsive. Uh, anytime you're trading, you want to see a breakout or a breakdown of a chart pattern. Ideally, you want it impulsive. And in, in my book, uh, if you get one of the two big indexes, the NASDAQ 100 or the S&P breakdown or breakout, you have to have the other follow to confirm, because uh, very often, one will break through, give you a little whipsaw signal if the other grabs support. And when NQ broke down, uh, the S&P 500 or ES was still well above or well within its wedge. So anyways, that's what happened. Let's zoom in a little bit tighter here. So there was the breakdown. And again, it pr uh, proved to be a little whipsaw signal. But today you had uh, confirmation. You had both of them break down. Uh, NQ again went down. And it was impulsive as well, which you didn't really have such an impulsive move yesterday. That helps. Not sure why the candles are uh, stretched so thin. There you go. You can see them a little bit better now. Uh, so there's our sell signal on NQ, and it was confirmed by ES, uh, although well, this one will leave a little cliffhanger. It'll leave everybody guessing uh, because we did break down. So by that account, uh, you see as I zoom in real tight here on the 60-minute chart, I want to cover those recent reactions again. You can see clean reactions on the trend line. Uh, we had a breakdown, a little intracandle pierce, but not anything impulsive, not what you want to see. We limp, went through it again, and then we broke down. I, and I'll be honest, not as impulsive as I like to see. Uh, and if you could zoom in close, you can see what happened. Uh, we rallied back. So it was a fairly impulsive candle. In fact, um, it, it was certainly it was the biggest red candle that you can see here for weeks now. You look at this candle, 60-minute candle, and you go back and you don't see any red candles uh, that size. Uh, so by that account, it was impulsive. So we're going to give it a check mark there. Uh, that's something for the bears, the breakdown. And, uh, you know, we had a rally and a kickback. Uh, so uh, I'm sure uh, that's a little something for the bulls, the fact that we didn't just waterfall sell off. Now, let me say this. You don't go from one of the most resilient bullish trends in years to lock limit down in the futures or, you know, a 3% drop. You just don't do that without a, a fundamental catalyst. Uh, if this is going to play out, uh, the momentum uh, will build, just like we rolled slow. Think back to October. We didn't just melt down off the highs. It was a slow roll, and then once we broke the trend lines, uh, we had some kickbacks on certain indexes and sectors. Others didn't, and that's it. So basically, to sum it up, keep it very simple, this is a breakdown and a back test, and we close just below that trend line. Now, I'm not going to split hairs, It's uh, although the trend line is pretty tight. I took it in real tight to these... Uh, these reactions, uh, it's close enough for government work. So for all intents and purposes, if you want to give it the benefit of the doubt, since this trend has been resilient, let's just say you want to wait for a little bit more evidence. In fact, if I go to a daily chart, the same uh, trend line here, the same rising wedge on a daily chart of ES, we zoom in again, that's that trend line off the, 20, the reaction low from the 27th, not the 24th lows. Captures more reactions. I like it a little bit better. Uh, and prices are behaving well off it. So if we look at that one, uh, then we're not broken down yet. Uh, so uh, I always talk about the, my BOD trend lines or benefit of the doubt. Well, that's it right there. So uh, as I mentioned to members on the site today, we have a couple of uh, – uh, short trades that we were recently clipped out of for you know relatively small losses, three percent or so, and I'm looking to add those back. Uh, but I want to see confirmation we didn't have it today. Uh, so even if it entails you know missing a little bit of a move on a gap down, you know, I still think there's uh, at bare minimum three, probably five more likely, uh, quite possibly I should say eight percent or more, and that's until a, a decent counter trend rally. The million-dollar question, we're not even going to get into it right now, is if we hit some of those targets, is that a great buying up on the road to new highs and beyond, or uh, are we going to go down now, and uh, is, is this the extent of the run? Uh, so, uh, again, let's not read too much right now into these charts of what happened today, uh, because for all intents and purposes, again, we're 
we're close enough to the trend line, although I have us below it on the 60 minute. I'm not going to split hairs with these candles. Again, you want to see the, let's, let's just see, make it simple. Let's see uh, today's lows get taken out. And then I would put a very, you know, high probability that that's it. That's good enough to trigger uh, a correction. That's a, what I call a tradable or swing tradable correction. And that's another big thing. It, I know it leads to confusion confusion on both the YouTube page and the members of the site. And I try to clarify there are multiple time frames. I wear many hats. I day trade when the opportunity is there. That means in and out. That means by definition, you take a trade, you're closed out before the market closes. You don't take that position home. Typically, you use much larger position sizes, much smaller stops, much smaller profit targets. I actively swing trade. That can be a swing trade that I might take home, but it only lasts for a few days. But the majority of the trade ideas on the right side of the chart is about are both swing trade ideas and then longer term trend trade ideas uh, or investing ideas. So speaking of that, let's roll over. Uh, again, this video will be relatively short. Let's just talk on the daily charts real quick. After yesterday's video, uh, I posted an update uh, on the site and then I figured I'd share that. I didn't cover it in yesterday's video, but I posted a link on the YouTube channel and I posted this chart on the site with a... Uh, uh, you know, link back to uh, my my year end analysis. So on October or December thirty first, uh, just as we we're getting going here, uh, I, I you know, and I've, I've maintained it and stated it several times since. This has been uh, from even really before we bottomed. This was my kick maximum kickback target. Don't get me wrong; I had a minimum target right right about here. And I stated in that video, again, it's on the YouTube channel, it's public, it's on the site, uh, December 31st, stating this was my max bounce target right here. Uh, and that's about 281, and call it 281, give or take. And this was my minimum bounce target. And they were both significant levels. You can pretty much see. I mean, if you look at it this way, it's, you box in that trading range that we had there after we started the slide down, and there's three nearly equal highs right there. Um, that is pretty solid resistance. And I think if we can punch up through there, and I'm not talking about just an intraday pop because uh, I stated this in the post yesterday, uh, one of two things will happen most likely when all eyes are watching a level. And I don't care if you just started, you know, uh, learning technical analysis a week ago, you're going to look at a chart and you're going to see that as a significant level. Uh, it's, it stands out. So a lot of eyes are on it. And what happens then is usually one of two things. Uh, you're either going to reverse just shy or you're going to blast on through it. Um, you know, an example to that would be this uh, f cell trade. This was an unofficial trade idea I threw out in the trading room earlier this week. Uh, or was it late? La no, earlier this week. Yeah, I said a pop above. Uh, it's in the trading room again. It was, I think, either uh, 60 or 60, maybe it was 62 cents. A break above 62 um, would trigger. I've traded this sucker in the past, and it can run. You can go back a couple years. See, the last trade we had was back here somewhere. Uh, I was at a, I don't know, 50 something percent move. And so this is a momentum stock. And when, um, you know, uh, everybody's chasing speculative, low price, low risk stocks right now, the, you know, small caps have been strong. This is the kind of junk that can run. And it's a, an aggressive trade. But the point was, I said, uh, my targets were 74, which we hit the first day, uh, popped up 74. It was about, a, I don't know what it was in percentage terms, about a 18% gain. And then I said the next target would be a dollar, but it just set, that's the actual resistance level. Uh, set sell your sell limit below that because buyers, it's a well-watched level. $1 has been a, a key technical level on this stock for a while. And it's also a psychological level. Penny stocks, when they trade below a dollar too long, they can get they eventually will be delisted. Um, so they try to get their share price back up there, and uh, it's, it's pretty bullish if they do. So, But the point being, when everyone's looking at a dollar and the momentum traders are in this, and, and I, I said it before, I said, um, this is the type of trade, it's a momentum trade, and when the music stops, you do not want to be the last one standing without a chair because this is what happens when momentum traders exit, and they also, uh, you know, a stock were reverse. Now it could have done one of two things. It could have popped above a dollar and just, you know, blown out, let's say, the shorts that tried to step in there. So get back to the markets. This is the same story on uh, the S and P is that uh, we have that level, which I was just covering on the 60 minute chart. I'll show it again here on the daily chart. Uh, we have that level there, which uh, let me jump back to Okay, let's jump back. Here's a screenshot from the video on the 31st. And also at the time, uh, we had just had our first thrust up, 
and I was watching this minor trend line I drew, said we'd come back here. This is my preferred scenario, back test that trend line, and then charge on up uh, to my next target there. Uh, that proved to be pretty much the, you know, the second best buying up in the rally, uh, the first course being the lows on the 24th. But we came back in, and uh, let's see where we were. Let's go back to the current chart, go back to the two-hour chart that we were just on, two-hour candles, and that's it right there. It's, there's how that played out back then. That was the trend line. We came back in, tested that downtrend line, and boom, really haven't looked back. Now, of course, you, what I was expecting here was another significant tradable correction. That's what we never got. Now, the point is... So we've now hit my pri my maximum price target, but the only difference is we've hit it, uh, uh, I don't want to say sooner than I expect time-wise, because we're already in late February. So this is about the time frame I expected. The only thing lacking so far in this scenario was a, uh, a little bit deeper pullback here uh, along the way. And so now the big question is, uh, well, of course, assuming then I'm right, and we reverse here. And as stated yesterday, we were only within 1% of that, uh, that max upside target. So uh, very likely that yesterday uh, could prove to be the top. Uh, I'm working off that right now, especially because that aligns with the breakdowns that I'm seeing uh, that I just covered on the index futures. Uh, should we get some more downside, follow through tomorrow, and really put those trend lines and those wedges in the rearview mirror, uh, then that will certainly uh, increase the chance that uh, this could be the end of the run. Um, but if not, I'm wide open to this. I mentioned on the site today to a couple members on the trading room that I, I would be, you know, we'll have to just gauge the next pullback when it comes, even assuming that it comes down. We all know we're going to get a decent, I'm talking a tradable pullback, not one of these little blips sooner than later. And uh, we'll just have to look at the nature of that pullback uh, when it comes to try to determine whether it is most likely going to be um, a great buying the uh, dip opportunity for the road to new highs or whether it will be the beginning of, uh, uh, of the next leg down. And if it is the next leg down, we're probably looking at a wave C you know, or a third wave and a, a big primary five wave cycle. And that, that could be very powerful. So I don't mean to be a fear monger here, but just be aware that if we start going down and the market just slices through each of the, the levels where it should stop, quote unquote, like key Fibonacci retracement levels, key support levels, things like that. Uh, if it just keeps on going down through there, you know, recognize it for what it, it, it could be. And that is the all powerful uh, wave three down, and um, you don't want it. You don't want to be on the wrong side of that too long. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be even more painful than being on the wrong side of of this one the entire way up. Because as I always say, the, about the one certainty you have in the market is stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise uh, during corrective phases. Okay, just a couple more charts to look at. And we'll wrap it up. The Fibonacci cluster. QQQ, sorry for the pause, guys. I thought I hit the pause button on the video. Uh, QQQ, you can see, has um, this, this this 174 60 level is not as significant as that resistance line on on uh, SPY we looked at a minute ago. But uh, it is worth noting because you had a reaction high back here in uh, to early 2018. You had a couple reaction lows there, one clean reaction low there, a reaction high there, and. Um, Again, here's that same trend line off if you uh, undercut, allow, because remember we had, uh, this is what I call momentum-fueled overshoot. We had a lot of downward velocity there, a lot of liquidation for selling, plus leading right into the Christmas Eve holiday. And so uh, in some cases, when I chart a stock uh, that had such a washout-type move or an index, uh, it does help sometimes I find to cut off those lows a little. And again, it's not trying to make a trend line fit that I want to fit. Uh, to me, a trend line that has more reactions is more valid than one without fewer reactions just because I'm con connecting that low point, if that makes sense to you. Uh, the PPO has not yet crossed, so those are things I'm looking for here. Uh, but it's definitely turning down. It's rolling down, as I talked about, slowing momentum. You know, I already went over that, that the bulk of the gains in this rally came in the first three weeks. Uh, and since then, 
you know, although it's been a resilient trend, we, you know, relatively speaking, and again, when I say relatively speaking, I'm talking to the moves that we've seen recently. You might say four, you know, five, five percent or what was it? Four percent in the last, uh, I don't know, month, month and a half. Sure. That's a, that's a good move, especially if you annualize it out. But again, uh, the market giveth, the market taketh away. And, um, you know, those, those gains, what tends to happen when you start to really lose momentum and you have a price compression like this, uh, you know, Bollinger Bands are pinching price compression. I would not be surprised at all to see about the last three weeks of gains right up to this point wiped out within, let's say, a week, um, possibly even just a, a few days uh, if, if these chart patterns play out. Again, that's, that's my take. Uh, may not happen, but I've seen a lot of instances like this where the boat is very crowded and loaded to one side, uh, meaning everybody's long, you don't have a lot of short interest, and then when the tide changes and everyone's finally realized the tide has changed, those longs start booking profits. Uh, you don't have high short interest because they've all been blown out, or you know, metaphorically speaking, a lot of them have been blown out. So you don't have the shorts to come in and cover on the way down, and that's where you get that's where you get these these you know sharp drop offs. All right, so uh, let's just watch tomorrow and see if we get any follow-through. Of course, it'll be Friday. Uh, they left everybody guessing today whether they'll leave us guessing into the weekend or whether the you know the bulls will recover this. You can see on the daily that Nat, the Qs are they did print a solid you know candlestick close. I don't want to say solid, but uh, it is a uh, candlestick close below the trend line. Where on uh, spy and ES, as I showed you a minute ago, did not. So to be continued tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart.